set and this is another set and together they make a bigger set. But how? I already told you. Hey, what are you talking about? I'm trying to teach her about sets. And? She's not getting it. But I'm confused. Oh, can I help? Yeah, mom, I think you better. Okay. A fraction can be a part of a whole or a part of a set. Emily and Sophia were trying to show fractions using these chocolates. This is actually a set. They're trying to figure out what fraction of the chocolates is red. The first thing they have to do is to count the total number of chocolates in the set. A fraction has three parts, the numerator, the denominator, and the line in between. The total number of pieces will be the denominator. And in this particular set, we have 20. The question is asking what fraction of the chocolates is red? So we're gonna count the red chocolates in our set. And we have 12. 12 goes on the top and this is our numerator. Now we can answer the question. What fraction of the chocolates is red? It's 12 over 20. In a different lesson, we'll learn another way of writing 12 over 20. Do check our videos on equivalent fractions and simplifying fractions. Let's take another example. Eggs. This is a set of eggs. They usually come in 12 pieces, and a set of 12 is called a dozen. So this morning, I prepared breakfast for my family and each of us wanted an egg cooked in our favorite way. What fraction of the dozen did I cook? Let's start writing our fraction. The total number of eggs in the dozen would be our denominator. And as we said, in a dozen, there are 12 total pieces. We still need our numerator. Our numerator is the number of eggs that I cooked. There's five of us, and each of us wanted an egg, so there's a total of five eggs that I cooked. One, two, three, four, five. Five goes on top, and five is our numerator. What fraction of the dozen did I cook? Five twelfths. Is there an easier way of remembering how to write fractions? Yes, there is. When you think of the numerator, try to think of the compass. The N in the compass always stays on top. Just like numerator, it always is written at the top. And when you think about the denominator, think of the word down. Because the denominator should always be written down or below the numerator. Now let's go and see some of the fractions as a set that my children have seen in our house. Okay, Benedict, what fraction part of your guns are small guns? Two-fifths. How did you say that? Because there are two small guns out of the total of five guns. Oh, cool. How about your big guns? What fraction part are your big guns? Three-fifths. How did you say that? Because there are three big guns out of the total of five guns. Smart. Okay, Sophia. What objects that show fractions have you found in the house? A set of crayons. Ooh, a set of crayons. Okay, so how many pieces of crayons are in your set? 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, 12 pieces in a set. What part is green or how many green crayons do you have? 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 out of 12s or 4 12s. How about orange? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 out of 12 or 5 12s. How about yellow? 1, 2, 3. So 3 out of 12 or 3 12s. Good job. Kiss your smart brain. Okay, Emily, so what did you find in the house that shows fraction? I found a box of Pringles. This is one set of Pringles. Okay, good. So how many pieces are there in a set? There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in this set. Okay, what fraction part is yellow? One, two, three. Three nines. How about red? One, two, three. Three nines. Now let's say Benedict ate two yellows. What fraction part is left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven nines. Good job.